Our guest today is the executive director of the Cook County Housing Authority. The Cook County Housing Authority is the second largest provider of affordable housing in the state of Illinois. Prior to this appointment, he, had, he, has, he has served as Commissioner of Buildings for Mayor Daley. Our guest today took the leadership role in making the inspection process more efficient and transparent. He also pushed hard on owners to maintain their vacant buildings. Our guest today earned his, political, or earned his bachelor's degree in political science from UIC. Ladies and gentlemen, Rich Monacchio. Richard. Thank you very much, Jay, and thank you all for coming uh, today. I appreciate it. I've been here before. It's been a while, and it's great to see a lot of old friends. Uh, Jay mentioned, I didn't realize that I had footsteps. Uh, Jay mentioned that Mike here, uh, there is life after building commissioner, <laughs> Mike. But he is doing a wonderful job, and it, it's, a, it's a great honor to be in that uh, spot, and I, I was proud to hold it. So as Jay mentioned, uh, I am now the executive director of the Housing Authority of Cook County. And while everybody's aware of uh, the CHA, and for good reason, because of, the, of the, the great work and the great transformation that uh, was accomplished at the Chicago Housing Authority, HACC serves the rest of Cook County. And uh, we also do some very important work uh, here. So what do we do? The Housing Authority owns, all throughout the county, about 2,000 units of housing that we rent to low-income families, seniors, and people with disabilities. We also operate uh, one of the largest voucher programs in the country, and that totals about uh, 13,000. So this is vouchers to helping poor folks, the elderly, the disabled pay their rent in private housing to private landlords. Before I get more into detail on what we do, I think it's important to put my remarks um, in some perspective. And by that I mean, I think we need to look at our social and economic realities we face today, especially of those of us in government and the private sector uh, who are really working hard to help those in need. Uh, the fact is today it's much, much more difficult for, for folks to uh, climb the social ladder, so to speak. Uh, upward mobility, while we all love to think that it's, it, it is a great thing, unfortunately, it just doesn't happen as often today. In fact, according to Brookings that put out a study a few uh, months ago, right now, if you're born into the bottom 20% socioeconomic scale, you've got a three in 100 chance of climbing to the top. Now, that's just a fact. It's nothing to do with, with class warfare or, or any political uh, uh, debates that we're hearing about now. It's a fact. But I think we'd all agree in this country that's just too many people to leave behind, which is why what we do is so important. And the work that uh, we do with, with uh, our partners is so important to actually help people become self-sufficient at the end of the day. Uh, the south suburban area, and actually the entire suburban area, have experienced uh, these same issues. In fact, uh, as a 2010 census reveals, uh, poverty is up 50% in much of the uh, suburban Cook County. So a, a lot of this is, doesn't happen in, in ways that we see it every day, but it's there, and it's a fact of life that, life that we have to deal with. This, at the same time, uh, we, in our economy, we have folks that want to work, can't work, can't find jobs, don't work as many hours. So it even adds more of a burden to, the, to this problem. In fact, Catholic Charities reports that um, uh, food requests at food pantries is up 150% in the suburbs. So I say all this to, to put uh, what we do in some sort of pr perspective. 
we help a lot of people, but there's a lot more that need help. So who do we serve? Uh, stereotypes abound uh, in this arena that folks that we help in public housing uh, and that Ida, Ida works with. But the, the truth is that it's a wide array of folks that need housing assistance, that need social service assistance. The fact is, yes, we do help a lot of single moms with kids. And we're proud of that fact, because this is a lifeline for these people and these families. But at the same time, I think it's important to consider fully two thirds of our clientele, two thirds are either seniors or folks with disabilities. So I think that, that that's a, something that we don't always grasp, but it's important to note that stereotyping or stigmatizing folks in need um, doesn't really help and it isn't really, isn't really true. And then one other fact I think that's uh, interesting, um, in a sense, for every one person who gets housing assistance, who's lucky enough to receive it, six other folks who are income eligible do not. So again, um, we're in an era where a lot of people need help, and I think it's important that if folks do have the opportunity to get that help, and we have the opportunity to help them, we do it wisely and efficiently. So that's what we focused on uh, in the one year that uh, I've been at the Housing Authority. I'd like to give a little glimpse about some of the programs we have to help the folks that I mentioned. Shelter Plus Care, for example, helps people with mental illness and those that have HIV and AIDS. Family Unification. Uh, kids that go into the foster care program or families that become disunited for all sorts of reasons. You can get a housing voucher so the mom or the dad can reunite the family and the kids can be a family unit again. That's what HACK does. Uh, one program that we're very proud of, uh, we have a gentleman here that I, I'm going to tell his story for a minute, uh, our Veterans Affairs Supportive Housing Program. We help last year 130 veterans at risk of becoming homeless or actually who were homeless. So I'd like to just ask uh, Mr. Harrell, Alan Harrell to step up for a minute please. I think Mr. Harrell is, uh, really epitomizes the good that government can do but also the power of the individual spirit. He served our country with distinction, came back, had some difficulties, but got into the program through Heinz Hospital in the Hack, the Housing Authority of Cook County, got a housing voucher, got back on his feet, and now actually works at the Jesse Brown VA Center as a vocational rehabilitation specialist, helping other veterans who are coming back to reach their potential and, and become more become self-sufficient again. So I, I think that really says it all. Thanks, Mr. Harrell, and, and for all you do, and uh, all the other veterans that we work with. So it's been about a year, as I said, that I've been at the Housing Authority, and uh, everything begins really with strong political leadership. And we're very fortunate, all of us, to have a very strong leader in, in County Board President Tony Preckwinkle. She's provided us with the, uh, the strong support um, and uh, guidance that uh, helps me do my job on a daily basis. She's also appointed some great board members. Um, we have a great board. I'd just like to briefly uh, ask those folks to step up for a second. We have Karen Shavers here with us. Karen. Polly Keel. Polly, thanks for coming. Paul Roldan is with us today. And Wendy Williams Walker. These are folks that serve uh, on volunteer boards. They give their time and effort for no, no compensation, and we couldn't do what we do without them. So what have we done in a year? Well, 
I am, I am very proud to announce, and actually President Preckwinkle announced yesterday, that we've reclaimed or put into service a total of 1,350 new housing units in one year. So think about it. In the, in the midst of the housing crisis that we face, the foreclosure crisis that we face, folks losing their homes, unfortunately, we've been able, through the voucher program and through rehabbing public housing units, added 1,350 units to the housing stock. Uh, we're very proud of that. Thank you. <laughs> I'm also happy to say that uh, HUD and the VA have awarded the Housing Authority 150 new veterans choice vouchers. So we're going to be able to help 150 more veterans coming back from uh, the conflicts in Iraq and Afghanistan in the coming year. So we're also looking forward to that in, in working with uh, Heinz Hospital. So how do we do what we do better? I think the main way for all of us in government, we realize that governments have to work together. Because it, if you're not, you have to get out of this silo mentality. I think we've all, we all know that. But I'm, I'm happy to say that the county uh, of Cook and the Housing Authority were doing that. With the county, for example, we're combining our resources to get economies of scale and purchasing, just working and acting smarter. With, with Mary and Ida at the state of Illinois, we're working to provide housing units to folks who are coming out of institutions uh, in, to comply with the Olmstead case. So this is an example of how, in, a, in an era of diminishing resources, we can really do more with less. And the way to do that is by working together. Our federal partner, HUD, um, is also now a true partner. Uh, we have the same mission, and now we're, now we're acting like it. So that's the way we're going we're gonna to keep running this organization. And in, a, in an era of diminishing resources, that we can continue to provide what we do. But like any organization, uh, we have to change all governments, all private sector, whatever the case may be. And we've done that. Just like most businesses, we've had to do it with a reduced workforce. But we actually are doing more with less because we're working smarter. With our uh, voucher program, believe it or not, this is the first time in recent memory that all the vouchers that the county has are actually leased up. So there's nothing sitting on the table because we got a waiting list of 10,000 people. So it makes no sense to have one voucher unused. We've also, working with landlords to make the process a lot more um, efficient, we've cut the time to inspection from 21 days to three days, and it's done in a more professional and transparent way uh, by using the internet, is one of the ways we do it. Um, I mentioned the uh, vacant units that, we've, we actually, that we rehab. This is a, this is a big deal. We, we, we rehabbed, uh, in the last two years, almost 250 units in the, in the villages of Ford Heights and Chicago Heights. Uh, a lot of folks told me and others that nobody would move there. But by investing in these communities and improving the physical conditions and also the social conditions, we've actually created communities. And I'm really happy to say with the great work of the staff um, that we've uh, put 225 more folks into those housing units and are going to work every day to make these viable communities where people want to live. So we've also realized, and one of the big complaints against uh, really not just the housing authority, but all, all assisted housing is that you've got to become ne better neighbors. Well, we realize that. And the way you do that is by communication. So we're having landlord outreach meetings. We can, uh, landlords can find out the status of their inspection online. Things that sound pretty uh, simple or um, in, 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 the, in the real world, but it's actually being done now in government here. Also, local officials. I think you have to meet and talk with folks because that's a way to allay fears and hear what the other side has to say. So there's, there's not this disconnect, and you don't have different levels of government fighting each other. 
Another thing we've taken very seriously is um, the, peop the folks that live in our uh, developments, most of them are law-abiding and, and, and good neighbors, but some aren't. And we have to face up to that. So we've been very uh, clear with our residents that housing, there's rights and responsibilities. So yes, the right to live in assisted housing unit, but you have to follow the lease. So the fact is that we have uh, removed quite a few people from the program, not because we want to, but because you have to protect the integrity of the program and you have to protect the people who live next to the neighbors. So that, that's one thing that's not an easy thing to do. It wasn't, it's not easy for me to do, but it had to be done because public housing can't be the housing of last resort anymore, especially when you have a waiting list of 10,000 people. And we have to have viable communities. And we have to rebuild public support for these programs. And that's one way you have to do it. Uh, the other thing we've uh, had to face up to is we weren't always the best uh, landlords. Uh, we weren't. <laughs> so that is changing as well. Uh, working with the sheriff's office and some of the local police departments, we've been able to make our uh, developments much safer, and we're proud of that. First and foremost, we're a property owner, and we have to be held to the same standards as any other landlord. And that's, that's the way it is, and that's how we're going to operate. So I mentioned before a few statistics. Uh, uh, I alluded to the fact that we're, we're cracking down a little. 50% uh, of housing choice voucher applicants were denied last year for non-suitability. Again, not something we want to do, but it has to be done. 61 cases in eviction court in the last uh, since the beginning of the year, and 135 folks that were removed from the voucher program for bad behavior. Again, we've got long waiting lists for a reason, because people need this support. Um, next, I'm going to talk a little bit about what we've done to change the physical face of our housing. And th this is the really exciting part, uh, because we've been able to partner in developing new facilities all over the county. Uh, we opened a new 78-unit senior building in Summit just recently. When it's fully occupied, 78 uh, seniors are going to live in this building. Most are occupied now. I have to say, when you go into this building, you'll find that um, it's amazing. It's, uh, it's a place where you would uh, love to have your mom or your grandmom live. Just last week, uh, President Preckwinkle also opened the South Suburban Pads facility in Country Club Hills, another great facility for the formerly homeless job training center as well. Uh, HACS providing the uh, rental assistance for that. So investing in the physical stock is also huge because we had a situation where we had deterioration and uh, a lack of investment in the properties. So over the last year, we invested about $8 million uh, into our buildings. So. You know, that's to the extent that we have dollars to spend, they're going to go into the buildings and go into uh, the families to help uh, make our neighborhoods more viable. Uh, in that light, we're working with uh, a whole host of providers uh, in Cook County and elsewhere to create a social service network for our families. That's huge. And we're going to take advantage of the newly created Chicago Cook Workforce Board that Mayor Emanuel and President Preckwinkle announced a few weeks back. I thank President Preckwinkle for appointing me to that board. I'm very excited about it, and I think it's, it's going to be the pipeline, the way that we change. We have to change the culture. We have to change attitudes. But we have to give people opportunity, or else it's not going to happen. So job training, education, job placement is the key. Uh, we're investing heavily in our kids. Uh, oh, there's me on the roof. No, I wasn't going to jump. Uh, that's what I learned from being building commissioner, Mike. Okay. Do we got the one with the kids? 
Oh, this is Home Depot. Okay. <laughs> Home Depot has been a, a, a good partner of ours as well. Actually, you can see it here. They're training, they're training some of our residents in, in basic carpentry skills. So again, there's no way you do it yourself. I mean, we don't, but if you, present, if you have a program that works, we found that there's willing partners out there and we hope that uh, you agree. Okay. What's next? Oh, here's the kids, good. This is the best part. Um, so here you have, uh, and just this happened on Saturday. We had a great event in Ford Heights at the Vera Yates Homes, and there must have been 100 kids out there. And we had a barbecue, and it was, it was heartwarming. Uh, I've been in this business a long time, uh, so I, I mean, we've, we've all have, and just to see this happen. I mean, we had kids coming up to us, um, it, was, it was Saturday, asking, are you gonna come back on, are you coming back tomorrow? I mean, it's just, it tugs at your heartstrings. I had, uh, we had a little basketball tournament as well that I played in, uh, did okay. Uh, <laughs> And I heard, some of the, I heard some of the guys saying, um, boy, you know, all, all the years I've lived here, this is the first time there's ever been a tournament. I mean, it's what it's all about. We fix, we fix the courts, we improve the playground equipment. It's, it's little things, but it's things that make a community. So this is in uh, Robbins. We had the same kind of uh, events. And I gotta say that our, the folks here on our staff, um, they're not in it, they're not just in it for the paycheck. Uh, they have a passion uh, for, for people and helping people, and we're gonna keep that up. Uh, but it is the, the best part of what we do. Here's our uh, Head Start Center. This is huge. We have a Head Start Center adjacent to our, right on our premises. It looks like any, I mean, any early education center in the city or the county. That's what we need to do more of. Thanks to the Cook County Sheriff, Tom, uh, helped us put on a great camp in Ford Heights this summer. Again, exposing kids to things that they're not gonna be exposed to otherwise. I mean, sometimes that makes all the difference. At least we hope it makes a difference in at least one kid's life, and it has. And we're gonna do it many times over. Uh, community gardens. Again, something that uh, gets people involved and makes, makes folks proud of where they live because they feel like they're making a contribution. Okay, so where does that um, leave us? Well, we know we have a lot of work to do. Um, we've done a lot and we're proud of it. But the fact is that we're not really gonna get there unless we have uh, more help. So I hope you like what you heard today. And we left some orange uh, cards on the table there. So if there's a way you think you can help us, uh, you have a job training opportunity or a job, um, maybe some goods or services that you can donate. And yes, you can even uh, fill it out and get on our bidders list because we do, we do bid out work. And we want more bidders actually to be more competitive. So. We hope that uh, you help us because we're on the right track here and it does take a village and we look forward to uh, working with you and for your support. Thank you. Uh, young, young Brenda will be passing through. If you have questions, write them out. And, uh I've seen more movement in an oil painting. That's <laughs> All right. That's for you, Gus Moore. I figured you'd know. All right. Joy Saxon, always there. The, the Lawrence Spivak of the City Club. That's really for the old timers. So. Who does the rehab, who, question, who does the rehab day-to-day -day work? Are they city plumbers, carpenters, etc.? cetera? Uh, the, the uh, the day-to-day -day work is done by uh, employees of the Housing Authority. 
Uh, we do contract out uh, big jobs, obviously. Construction work is contracted out, but the maintenance is uh, done in-house, and I, I might add, uh, done very well. Well, Rich, you kind of uh, stunned the crowd. <laughs> They're overwhelmed. How about a big round of applause for our speaker? <laughs> <laughs>